in the video about um, the um, the books of wisdom and poetry I was talking about, um, I started talking about something called chiasm. And I didn't really get a chance, I feel like, to give a good explanation of chiasm or some of the examples that it occurs in. So this video is not another part of the lessons, it's just an addendum to that lesson. Um, and here's, I'm going to show you three examples of chiasm. The first one is from Genesis 11, um, 1 through like verse uh, 12 or something. Um, and so if you notice, it both starts and ends on the same point, the whole earth and the whole earth. The middle point is, but the Lord came down. Okay, so the whole earth had one language, Shinar and settled there. Come, let us make bricks. Come, let us build a city with a tower, but the Lord came. Then it goes right back to a city, to see the city and the tower, a city with a tower, that the men were building. Come, let us build. Come, let us go down and confuse our language. Come, let us make bricks. Babel, because there, Shinar and settled there, the Lord confused the language, had one language, the whole earth, the whole earth. See how chiasm works? It kind of has this, um, this uh, it looks like a half of an X. Okay, just like that. And um, it actually happens quite frequently in the Bible. Genesis 11 is one example. Now let me show you another one from Deuteronomy. Now the book of Deuteronomy as a whole is one long chiasm. Okay, so chapters 1 through 3, I'll look backwards. Chapters 31 through 34, I'll look forwards. Chapters 4 through 11, a covenant summary. Chapters 27 through 30, a covenant summary. Chapters 12 through 26, the covenant stipulations. If you do this, this is going to happen. Okay, so that tells us that the most important thing in Deuteronomy is that God is wanting their obedience. These are things that happened in the past. These are things that are, that are happening. Okay, um, this is the covenant. This is what's going on with the covenant. Covenant, but right here, here's the stipulations. Okay, I want you to obey me. I want you to listen to my words. I want you to follow what I'm saying. Okay, so I hope that that kind of explains that. And then here's a, a third example of of uh, chiasm. The first seven chapters of Second Corinthians are a chiasm. Um, Paul has confidence in his motives in chapters. Uh, starts in chapter one, verse twelve. Down here in chapter 7, verse 13, confidence in the Corinthians. In chapter 1, verse 23, sorrow for those punished, sorrow among Corinthians. Upcoming travel plans, travel plans. The spirit versus the letter, Christ versus, versus Belial. Present afflictions, present afflictions versus present glory. Reconciliation. So the moral of all this is that the whole reason for Paul's ministry is for the purpose of reconciliation. For the purpose of restoring people. Okay, that's his. That's really his his point there. He does have a method to that. I've read through Second Corinthians so many times, and always thought there's this is just crazy. But you know, as this shows, he, there was a method to what he was saying. It was it was a chiasm. Um, so chiasm, the center point, is usually the most important, um, and it always works like a think of a half of an X. See, goes in, goes out. The, the this is the center. It goes out and repeats itself in reverse. Um, however, remember, sometimes the things will be um, opposites rather than the same thing over again. Uh, for instance, it's not confidence in, in his motives and then confidence in his motives down here. It's confidence in his motives up here, then confidence in the Corinthians, which is the opposite. I, me, confidence in my motives, confidence in you. See what I mean? There's a difference there. Um, and I hope that that explains... Um, that explains chiasm a little bit better, and you can see how, how big of a role it plays in the Bible and how... Um, there is a method to, to the writing styles. You just have to see it as its own thing. Um, if there's any questions about chiasm, uh, post in the comment below.